Hey guys, it's Spore here. Uh, now I've realized at this point that my channel lacks a clear focus. Uh, I talk about dolls, I talk about Lush sometimes, I've been talking about my lizards. So um, I thought today I would convolute my channel even further by starting my first story time video for you all. Um, now I've been holding on to this story for a couple of years now um, and even just going back and kind of thinking about it, looking at my old emails from my landlady, um, it sparked a rage within me and I just feel like I need to um, set this story out there into the world so that you can know about it and hopefully something like this has not or will not happen to you in the future. So this is the story time about my crazy landlady. Bear with me, I may be missing some parts, I may have to come back and fill it in. I have a few notes here just to kind of keep me on track, but there's a million stories and this is going to be a long one. So the story all starts, um, I had just finished university and I was looking for my first full-time job and a, a job kind of fell into my lap that was um, quite a far ways away from uh, my parents and my hometown and where I was living. Um, it was four hours away and I ended up taking the job um, for the experience and for um, just the chance to live away from home and kind of see what that was like because I stayed um, living at home for um, all of my university studies as well. So um, I needed to quickly find an apartment because my job was going to start in a couple of weeks. So I went with my parents um, out four hours away just to kind of scout out a couple of apartments that um, we had found. And unfortunately, there was pretty slim pickings. It was a very small town that I was moving into. And we had three places to look at. Uh, so the first one I totally don't even remember, to be honest. Uh, the second place that I looked at was almost like a renovated garage or like a little guest house in a backyard that was beside a pool. Um, and the family told me they would be using the pool a lot in the summer and that I couldn't use it. So uh, they would be noisy outside of the apartment. It, it was also very dirty and just didn't look like great living conditions overall. So that was a total no. Um, so we went to our final third place that we just happened upon while we were in the town. And it was a basement apartment um, with its own separate entrance through the back um, that had a living room, two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a kitchen slash laundry room which they were intending to rent the two rooms out to two different girls. So I got there and it almost seemed too good to be true. It was. <laughs> um, but uh, the lady who was showing it said she was not the landlady. She was uh, one of the tenants upstairs. And the landlady was living on the property with her upstairs and uh, that they wouldn't be bothering us. They had their own separate entrance. Um, the only thing that was shared between the two apartments was the laundry so she might occasionally be coming down to do some laundry which was fine um, because the entire apartment was completely furnished it had a beautiful couch a lovely tv in the living room and a, a fireplace that was off limits which whatever i understand is a fire hazard um, if you have random people using your fireplace and then i could use the the laundry and i had my own tiny kitchen and just I, ha I got a pick of the two bedrooms. There are two bedrooms that were open and they just told me they would continue interviewing for another girl to live in the apartment with me and that they promised it was safe. It was girls only. Um, it would need to be clean, but I figured I could do that. I'm not a very messy person and that it would just be lovely and I seemed great and they were happy that I brought my parents because they thought that was responsible and whatever. So it just seemed like the perfect situation. So I picked my room that I wanted. Um, there was a bed already in there. I didn't have to bring anything in. There was already a dresser and a closet. And it just, it was just perfect for me because I did not know how long I was going to be staying there. So I moved in a couple of weeks later and uh, everything seemed great. Um, the only problem that I noticed that I don't think I noticed when I initially that I would rent there was um, that my entrance had a sliding door to get in. What made this problematic was that 
I could lock it from the inside with the sliding door mechanism, but if I was to leave the apartment, um, there wasn't really a way for me to lock it. So their solution was for me to put a padlock on it. So they had it rigged up so that I could padlock it closed whenever I left, which would be fine if the padlock wasn't accessible from the outside so that I could get potentially locked in. So anyway, I would take the padlock off when I was home, put it inside, and then I couldn't get locked in. So that all sounds like a kind of weird fire hazard that they have kind of worked around. And they did only have one key for this, so they were constantly telling me that they were showing the apartment and that I needed to leave the key. And I don't know why they didn't just have a second key made for this padlock and that I had to keep it clean all the time because they were always showing it to another person. There was always a potential girl that could be moving in with me at any time, basically, which didn't happen for months, coincidentally. So during this time, because there was nobody living with me, I would occasionally have my mom stay over and she used that second room and I quickly learned that that was not okay. Um, it started with the upstairs neighbor coming down to do her laundry once a week or so, usually on the weekend when I was home and she would have a conversation with me, whatever, if I was sitting in the living room or she would come knock on my door if I was in the bedroom and see what I was doing and would make comments. Oh, I see that there's dishes still in the sink. Uh, you should probably think about doing those. Oh, I noticed that your kitchen hasn't been swept in a while. I'll bring down a broom to make sure you do that. Oh, I see that you haven't been vacuuming. Uh, don't worry, we'll make sure you get a vacuum so you can vacuum more regularly. Just like all these little passive aggressive notes about how I should keep it cleaner or we were showing the apartment and we noticed this or that. So she started just getting a, rubbing my nerves a little bit the wrong way. And then she started using the deep freeze. So we had a deep freeze. Obviously I couldn't use the whole thing. Uh, it was a big deep freeze in this uh, laundry room. And so she asked, do you mind if I just use half of the deep freeze? And okay, but she started using the deep freeze as what looked to me was definitely a way to spy on me. So she would come down with nothing in her hands, rummage in the deep freeze, look at me, talk to me, and then leave with nothing in her hands. Or she would just come down with a loaf of bread and, you know, put it in and casually just start walking around. There are also a couple of locked cupboards in this basement that she magically had the key to, so she would rummage around in there when she felt like it and just generally made use of the space that I was told was for me. And uh, it just felt, started feeling really uncomfortable. Um, and she would just make comments like, oh, I see your mom stayed, you know, you probably shouldn't have her over and use that other room. So I stopped having my mom over and I stopped using that other room because I did feel like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's not, I'm not renting that specific room. So I really shouldn't be touching it. So I just closed the door and stopped using that room entirely. So they would see, okay, the door is closed. She's not touching it. When we come to spy on her, we notice she's not using it. So yeah, so just occasionally I would just get these weird passive aggressive comments. Um, and then it came to Christmas time and uh, I had to go back to work but my boyfriend who lived four hours away um, he had a bit more time off so I brought him back with me and I had him stay for a couple of days and this was very not okay with the landlady um, she was clearly watching me she noticed that he was there and she would send me emails saying you know we're going to be showing the place and uh, we, when is your boyfriend leaving because we need to show the place and we don't want it uh, to look like it's okay that they have someone over and that they have their boyfriend over and that this is uh, a safe space where we don't have boys and you shouldn't have him over and you shouldn't be here. So I explained to her, you know, this is a one-time thing. There's still not another person living down here with me. It's the holidays and I just really missed him and wanted to have some time with him. And so she just kept sending me messages like, we're showing the place on Friday, uh, which they weren't. And uh, he just, he needs to be out of here. Meanwhile, upstairs lady, I'm going to call her Bran. 
So Fran, who's constantly spying on me and then tattling on me to the landlady, um, starts bringing her son downstairs into the basement with her when she's doing laundry. She has like a teenage son. And I'm just lounging around in my pajamas doing what I do because it's a girl house and girls are only allowed. And yet son can come down, son can live upstairs and stay over. Like that's not a problem because you're landlady's BFF slash I don't know if you're her gay lover. I just, I couldn't figure it out. But, but me, if I have a boy there for a day, oh no, this is the end of the world. So after that, I did not bring him back again. But... While he was there, the bad thing happened. So, um, the, I was using the bed that they had left in the room. And it was like one of his first days that he was there with me. And we both sat down on it. And the bed frame gave out. Like one of the legs just broke off. And the first thing I'm thinking is, oh no, she's already judging me for having a boy. She thinks I'm doing something nasty on her bed. And it's broken. But it wasn't even that. We literally just sat on this corner that was volatile, which we later discovered was from a bad patch job, and it collapsed. So I had to let her know, your bed frame collapsed. We sat down on the corner. We took the bed, fr uh, the box spring and mattress off, looked at the leg of the bed, and it had clearly been poorly repaired in the past. So it looked like it had snapped off, that someone had drilled a new hole for the leg to go in, had used a very weak screw or something and then kind of just did a patch job to reattach it very poorly. So the, the screw had snapped and the leg snapped back off. So I took the bed frame out, we put it in the spare room and closed it in the door and we let the landlady know. So she messaged me back, uh, was very um, like mon monotonous in her message saying, uh, you know, that is a new bed frame and our previous, the previous person in your room had broken the bed frame, but they replaced it with a new one. And so that one is brand new. And I said, no, it's clearly been, been repaired before. And they said, no, this is the one that we bought. It is new. So that was a lie. But, um, so I just said, you know, it's broken. It's not my fault. Here's pictures of how it's broken, how I didn't do it. Feel free to come down and look at it. It's in the other spare room take a look if you want, but it wasn't me. So boyfriend leaves, everything's going okay. I'm just not talking to these women and starting to avoid them. I started to get very avoidant. I would try to be away every weekend because I just felt like they were judging me and um, always spying on me and making sure I was cleaning. I would do weird things like turn on the vacuum cleaner so that they would hear me vacuuming even if I wasn't really, so that they would think I was cleaning. Like, it was just very weird. Um, they started to do other weird things. Like, I came home one day and there was just a clock in the bathroom, which I took to mean, you're spending too much time in the shower, so look at the clock or something. Like, I don't know if they're like just trying to send me these weird subliminal messages. So one day, Fran comes down and she, uh, sees me in the bedroom. I'm eating some soup. I was in a bad mood. I don't remember why, but she comes in and says, um, the bed frame is fixed. Let's put it back on your bed. We fixed it. And so I was crouchy. I said, okay, I'd already been really irritated with her at this point. So we lift up the bed. The bed's really heavy. It's like a queen size mattress. Um, they've patched this leg up the exact same way that it had been patched up when it broke for me. We put the bed frame on it, or we put, sorry, we put the box spring on it, and it just collapsed again. The leg just <laughs> popped out. So I was, I was feeling awesome at this point. It was like my justification. Like, see, it wasn't me. It was you guys who did this before, and it's broken again from the weight of the bed, not even a person. So uh, we took the bed frame back out, put it back in that other room. Uh, it disappeared one day, and I never had a bed frame again just laid on the mattress on the box spring on the floor until I left that place. Um, but it was just, it's kind of like, see, I told you so, I'm not an idiot. Um, so that was kind of just some justification for me. Story is not over because this is still only December. I stayed there for a year. And uh, in April, I had a guest over again. 
and it was my cousin, my female cousin from out of town. And uh, she came two hours on the bus to visit me. And we were having a great time. We were a little bit loud. Um, but of course, while she was there, uh, Fran has to come down and check on something. And she asks about my cousin and what we're doing. And I explain we're just having a few drinks, hanging out. She's staying over in my room. And at about 10 o'clock at night, I get an email from the landlady, something about, I'm not sure if you, maybe you didn't understand the room for rent, but uh, it's a room just for you. So we expect that there aren't any guests here after 11 p.m., just to be respectful for all, all who live in the house. And it's just, it's a room for rent just for you. So just so you know, and it was just like this really belittling message about how I can't have guests. And she wouldn't have known this, that I even had a guest, if she hadn't had her spy come down and check on me. So I was very angry after that. I brought my cousin home the next day. And I was just like, I can't, I can't be in this place on the weekend. They're watching me, they're crazy, and they won't let me do anything. And I feel like I'm in this weird prison. That was the last time I had people over. I just started being super avoidant. I just what I wasn't there on the weekends. I would drive two to four hours to different places so that I wasn't there. I came home one day and Fran had completely rearranged the living room. She had put her workout equipment down there and told me occasionally she would be coming down to use the exercise machines, which was again like, okay, now you're gonna come exercise to watch me. Like, what is this? Very, very rude. And uh no privacy. So finally, after months and months of me living there, uh, they got another person to move into that second room. So I, I got a roommate. And she was this really sweet girl that they clearly did not realize was only 16 years old until she moved in. And I think I let it slip. Um, but they did not like the fact that she was very young. She was um, an orphan. And um, she... Would occasionally go to visit her grandparents but she was living on her own she did not have anywhere else to go really she didn't have any money or a cell phone or a laptop she didn't use the internet um and she had very little food so i would give her a bit of mine sometimes and she would get food from the food bank and she was she was being subsidized to live in in some housing because she was of, of under age but did not have anywhere else to go so she was very sweet um she wasn't home a lot. Her room was a giant tornado mess, but again, nobody's business but her own. She had a lock on her door, thankfully. My door didn't have a lock, but she was able to lock her door when she went out. So at least she wasn't getting spied on as intensely as I was. And uh, the only problem that we had was that sliding door situation. So if one of us left, we could potentially lock the other one in or out depending so we had to keep like a system going where we would let each other know whether we were home or not and then we would know whether we could lock the door and we talked to the landlady and she basically said there's nothing else i can do so we would just have to coordinate and uh, leave messages for each other if we were going away so we would know whether or not we could lock the door and as i'm showing her how this is problematic when she first moved in i locked myself outside and she had to pop out the window screen and pass me a key so I could unlock it. Because the upstairs people locked the access to their upstairs. So it was like if anything happened, well, we have to crawl out the window. And at least we were on the base in the basement so we could crawl out the window. And I did lock her in one time. I didn't know she was home because she was often not home. And uh, I didn't like to bother her, so I didn't knock on her door. Her door was always closed or locked, it lo closed and locked. So I locked the door from the outside with the padlock and she was locked in and she had to pop the screen out and crawl out the window. So weirdly enough, because they were spying on us this intensely, I got a message. They would message me about her because she didn't have a cell phone um, or the internet. So they would send me emails and texts about her asking why she had taken the screen out. And it was like, really, you're watching all of the windows and you've noticed that on the far side of the house that you shouldn't even be looking at on a regular basis that the screen is popped out. 
it's because we were locked in. They would also message me about asking why the windows were open in the summer um, because we were letting the air out, but I would open the window to let the steam out be in the bathroom because there was no fan and it was just like, it was like, what do you want? Do you want mold or do you want like be, to be able to air this room out and lose some air? I guess you want mold. Okay, we'll make it moldy for you. <laughs> like, didn't make any sense. So I would talk to this roommate and we talked about how we felt really violated, really spied upon. Um, we were left a really odd passive aggressive note one day uh, that said, I noticed that there were coat hangers because my uh, Fran would hang up her clothes to dry above the uh, washing machine on coat hangers. She said, I noticed one of my coat hangers fell behind the dryer. Why didn't you pick it up? It's like, what? A coat hanger fell back there? You're going back there to look? Like, oh, I better make sure all my coat hangers didn't fall down. That's really psycho. You're insane. Who cares? So I, I felt worried for my roommate all of the time because she didn't really have a way to contact people. I was always afraid that she would get locked in, that they would do something weird to her. They would send me messages about, we think she's stealing, or why does she have her fan on when she's not home? Can you turn it off? And it's like, no, her room is locked. Who cares also? Why do you know her fan is on? What the heck? They said they could hear it from upstairs. It made like a noise or something. So we were convinced that perhaps they had cameras on us or that they were watching us some other way. Um, we just, we felt, we both felt spied upon and we both wanted to get out. So I lived there for a year. I ended my contract with my job and I moved out of this house. Um, when I moved out, I uh, took all of my stuff with me and that included a set of dishes that looked like my dishes but I guess belonged to the house. So a few days after I moved out, I don't know if they were coming down to check and make sure that um, my roommate was not stealing anything from them, but they sent me a message saying, we noticed some of our dishes were gone and uh, we just, we, we know that you wouldn't do this. So uh, we just wanted to ask to make sure though, because we think that roommate is stealing and uh, we just, we wanted to make sure she didn't steal them. And so I looked through my boxes and sure enough, I had taken plates that looked almost identical to mine uh, with just a very slight difference in the pattern. And I guess those were theirs. But like, why were they looking in the cupboards anyway? Like, it, I don't, I don't get it. It was like they had just left a couple of dishes down there and we could use them, but they needed to make sure they were there like right away after I left just in case they were being stolen. So... I did end up bringing them back a couple of weeks later. I had an event to go to in the city and uh, I just went by with a box. I knocked on the door. Landlady appeared upstairs in her like um, house coat looking all like creepy. And she told me that um, during the time that I was gone, they had a boy move in and it didn't work out. So he was gone within two weeks. So I was just like, what the heck? Like, who are you? These Like, they just would always, le like, have it over our head that if we did something wrong, they would evict us. So we had to follow their insane rules. And uh, so I dropped off this box of the dishes. I never went back. I actually haven't even been to that city again since. It's been a couple of years now. And uh, I was just totally done with it. But uh, that is my insane landlady story. And it doesn't even really involve the landlady that much as much as it involves her uh, upstairs, our upstairs neighbor spy who was like her little lackey. So um, I really hope that you or someone you know has not been in this crazy situation that was a fire hazard where you felt trapped and in jail and like you were being monitored. Um, because as an adult, that doesn't feel good. You're an adult earning money, paying your rent, and you're just being spied upon in an area of a house that the, the spy shouldn't even be in. So that's my entire story. I hope you enjoyed hearing about it. I know that it felt cathartic for me to get it out there. Um, so thank you for watching, and uh, I'll be back with some sort of content again sometime soon. Take care, guys.